And I've got two here who attended the, the meeting in Kirao the other night, so they're quite too much different to that. And uh, so, Bruce and Alan, you'll be getting the, the full. Were you at Kirao? I watched it on the YouTube. Thanks. And by the way, I want to thank you, Neil, for making those videos available because people who aren't there can't make it for any reason to see what went on. Oh, well, and, so and, absolutely. And as well, you you've, seen, you've seen it also. Alan Blair, you'll be the only one that's actually seen the, the presentation for you, unless you've watched it. On so, can we skip the, the presentation and get oh, to the Tracy, door? haven't you watched this? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, just, it's on YouTube. We'll give you the address. Go and watch it later. But, Tracy, we welcome you as a rate player, not as the editor of the paper. That makes life feel better. We can say we have more rate players here than that. That is, this is part of the representation review that we have to do at least every six years. And in the six years that have taken place over the last six years, there have been changes in terms of local government act that we now have to, instead of doing the four well-beings, now we have to do things efficiently, effective, efficiently, effectively, and at the lowest cost. And as you well know, that council has been has made some pretty hard decisions because we're trying to keep the rates low. So we've closed Bernardi Street toilets, we're closing the, um, the Tower of Eyesight, we've looked at the closing the T Rail Library. And that same sort of scrutiny that has taken place as we do that now has to go into governance. The only place that really has come out with any cost of governance is the Bay of Plenty. And although it's difficult to compare apples and get everything right, the figure they actually came out with for governance in the Bay of Plenty was $43 million. In the Bay of in the Waikato, if you take all our uh, councils, we've actually got 115 councillors to look after 430,000 people. So the mayors onto that, we've actually got more councillors and mayors in the, in the Waikato region than we have MPs. And we keep saying we've got too many MPs. And of course we've got to realising that 430,000 Auckland has lost 1.2 million. And so what do we do? So we have to give governance the same sort of scrutiny that we have given other expenditure. And so that's what council has done debated and gone on to see, hey, where can we go in terms of governance? What is the most cost-effective way to govern? What's the most efficient way to still ensure that the community has a voice? And so this means this process we have to go through. Interestingly, we've already started our uh, representation review because some time ago, not too many weeks ago, Council actually made the decision not to have Maori seats. So that actual decision went out, that was part of the open for public consultation, and we got minimal response into that. You'll have noticed also that that same sort of idea has caused a lot of consternation in Rotorua, ending up with marches and uh, uh, I think 200 people submitting to the Rotorua District of City Council over the last two or three days, and we will have also noticed in New Plymouth the sort of kerfuffle that has gone on there. So we've actually started that, and now we're going through this process right now. And Craig's now going to go through and sort of say, hey, where have we gone? Why? And what are we doing it? And so the important part is that, I must admit, Bruce, you <laughs> want to sort of say, hey, hey, now that community feedback is important how we get it, what we can do, we can say, hey, so please, tonight, I hope you will not only fill your own one in, but to actually take some of these submission forms and give them to your friends, so that we can say, hey, where is the South Lake Asa going to be going in the next 10, 15, 20 years? How do we want to be governed? Because recognise that I am firmly against amalgamation. I believe it was we would really suffer. But one of the things that the Property Council has used as one of their arguments for amalgamation is that there are too many councillors, too many mayors, too many chief executives, therefore they all should come together. And we've therefore got to address that so that we can answer them. How would we say, hey, we haven't got too many, we're balancing local democracy 
up against this thing called government. So, Craig, take us through. Thank you. And welcome, councillors. Do you have sat through three of them? Four of them. I am going to stand up here and do this for a couple of reasons. One is I need to project to the big audience at the back. Um, and secondly, I can see my screen and I've got the notes up here, so excuse me while I'm, while I'm here on the link. Um, as, uh, as Neil said, um, this, is, uh, this is very much um, around what councillors, why councillors propose what they've proposed. Um, what I will do is run through the presentation and take questions at the end if I may. Um, just want to introduce uh, Richard Fisk, who's our legal manager um, at council. Uh, Neil obviously, Councillor Jeff Gash, Deputy Mayor Jenny Shattuck, and Councillor Thomas Lee. Uh, appreciate you guys turning out. You have a good side, Rod. So, what have we done? And well, what have council done? I'm, I'm here to explain council's um, rationale, um, and as I will take questions at the end of it. So, why do a representation review? Look, it is best practice, and Neil's already identified that through the long-term plan uh, process, uh, the council's always considering where they can better spend their money, where they can get better efficiencies, better quality and level of service for our ratepayers without a, a big rates imposition. Uh, at the same time, we do an internal uh, review um, to see if we're aligning with the long-term plan um, in terms of staff and, and the way we set structure ourselves as well. So it, it's also good practice, and therefore, you know, there's a role on is let's look at the representation. How many councils have we got? How they represent? How, where they represent um, their, their constituents, and so on. We do have to do this every uh, six years, regardless. It is a, a, a legal requirement that we do this as a minimum every six years. So we're now at that point. In terms of the, uh, the, the current, the, the status quo, the way that we went to, uh, to elections last time round, we had 10 councillors, we had three wards, Tokara, Pataru and Tira, and of course the one community board in, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, three, yeah, three wards, Tokara, Pataru, Tira, and the one community board in Tira. So that's the status quo, that's where we sit currently. Council considered all of that and uh, have decided to uh, propose some changes, and again, it is a proposal, so you're open to, we're open to, the council's open to submissions, we want to hear everyone's thoughts. And, and what they now are proposing is to go to 10, or to remain at 10 councillors, but to change to two wards. So again, looking at the boundary line there, the, uh, the boundary line doesn't change, and I'll come back to talk in a bit more detail about this, but really we're looking now at a, at a north and south ward, uh, and also to do away with the Tira community board. So if we look at each of those individual points, number of, uh, number of councillors to start with. So councillors determined or proposing to stay with the status quo. And they did consider going down to eight. Um, and part of the, the logic around uh, reducing eight or to eight, and when they looked at that number, they thought, well, you know, is that going to be too great a workload on the councillors that, uh, that we have at the table? Uh, you know, I can honestly say that the councillors that we, uh, we have um, don't get paid or remunerated anywhere near as well as what they should do for the amount of time they put in. They've, they've had 68 days um, of council since they uh, since this term started. That's council alone, it's uh, not including workshops and so on. So you know, it's a huge commitment and, uh, and and therefore, you know, would eight wear, you know, run them too thin? Would it also mean that perhaps uh, the community couldn't get hold of their councillor in, uh, in a situation where they, they needed to if we only had eight? So that was another consideration. Um, there would be a saving of uh, over, over $40,000 in salaries if they went down to eight, so that again was, was considered. Um, and the other consideration around eight versus ten is, uh, is that generally we tend to be quite well represented in, the, uh, in this district. And if you look at the documents on your table, on your seat, sorry, um, the representation proposal, there is a table there that shows the, uh, the number of constituents per councillor. And uh, as you'll see, we're actually quite low. You know, we sit fourth at the bottom with 2,250 ratepayers per, um, per councillor on a representation basis. If you look at Waitomo, Otrahonga, and Apotiki, they are lower, but one point I would make is that you can, under legislation, you can have no less or no fewer than six um, elected representatives. So they can't, they can't be any smaller than what they are at the council table. So th those were the considerations. Um, and, and when they, when they, when council did look at all those issues, they determined that again because of the uh, the tensions around workload, around uh, around all the other 
issues of, of just the dress that they would remain with uh, with Glen Council.